chapter 2, verses 10 and 12. Luke chapter 2, verses 10 through 12. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, <clears throat> which will be for all people. For there is born, Luke chapter 2, verse 11, For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Verse 12, And this will be the sign to you, you will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. Shall we read verse 12 together? And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. This morning, I would like to title my sermon as Come in Faith to the Babe of Bethlehem. Come in faith. Can you repeat that with me? Come in faith to the babe of Bethlehem. The last verse says, verse 12 says, and this will be the sign, angel telling to the shepherds, and this will be the sign to you. You come to Bethlehem to have faith in Lord Jesus, to have faith in the babe of Bethlehem. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger, you know, you may be thinking this is the same scripture we read every year repeatedly. Some of us know these scriptures, you know, by heart. And what are we going to listen from this scripture? You know, that's what I was also thinking. What are we going to listen from this? So here we see the angel of God inviting everyone to come in faith to the babe of Bethlehem. I want you to be attentive this morning. Listen to me. You may be tired, but don't give room to your tiredness while listening to the word of God. Now, the angel says, this is the invitation. I want you to come in faith to the babe, to see the babe of Bethlehem. You know, this morning, I want to remind you that we are so blessed to come in faith to Jesus. Don't you feel that way? You know, we are so blessed to have faith in Lord Jesus. You know, there are many people in this world, they are not blessed to have faith in Lord Jesus. But this morning, you and I, we are so blessed because we have faith in God. We know, we have seen, we have went and saw our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, I want to tell you the blessings that we inherit today. It's not given to many people outside. Now, this is the, I believe this is an invitation that the angel of God is giving to the shepherds to say, you come and see the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. I believe this is an invitation to every member of the family. This is the invitation to the whole world. You know, God needs everyone to come to him in faith. Can you say that with me? God wants everyone to come to him in faith. God is needed for every member of the family. Infants, yes, they need Jesus. They need Jesus more than we need. What about uh, you know, children? They need Jesus. Young adults, they need Jesus. Young men, they need Jesus. Old, what, what about old men and women? They need Jesus. Everyone is in need of Jesus. And everyone has to come in faith to see Jesus. What about educated, uneducated, wise, unwise, working, non-working? Everyone is in need of God. Everyone has to come to that faith that we need to have today in Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone must come in faith. That's the plan of God. That's the plan of God. You know, some of us may be praying for our family members. How many of your families are not, not, not in faith yet? Can I see your hands? How many of Many. Many of your families are not in faith. You know, this morning, this is the message that we are getting from this. When the angel of God made that announcement, he is saying that everyone must come in faith with the Lord Jesus Christ. Every one of your family member must come in faith. You know, if you think about the whole scenario of the birth of Lord Jesus Christ, and if you look at a couple of instances, a couple of events that took place around the birth of Lord Jesus Christ, 
You know, scripture and especially the gospel of Luke is very clear. And he says, little children need to come to Lord Jesus Christ because the Lord God was a child himself. The little baby lying in the manger, all our children need to come to see that baby. You know, sometimes when you take babies, when somebody is born new, when someone delivers a baby, we take our children to the hospital. And when we take our children to the hospital, they just, they're even scared to go and touch the baby. We don't allow sometimes to touch the baby, but you know, they're so curious going to see the baby. So little children, they need Jesus. They need to come to Jesus. What about young women? Young women must come to Jesus because Mary was a young woman. She was used as an instrument by God. She was a young woman. So young women need to come to Jesus. What about young man? Joseph was a young man who had great faith in God. Who had great faith in God. He was willing to accept Mary. Even though she was conceived not because of him, she, he was willing to accept. He was great, a great man of faith. Young men need to come to Christ because we want Joseph's like young women who have put their trust in God. Old women should come in faith with the Lord Jesus because Anna was a old woman who was looking for the coming of the Lord who was eagerly waiting to see Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is needed for old women like Anna. They need Jesus. They need Lord God. What about men, old women like Simeon, who was waiting for the consolation of Israel, who wanted to take the baby, who wanted to touch the baby. He wanted to live until the baby is born. You know, old women, men need to come to Christ. You know, Jesus is needed for everyone, for all the members of the family. What about working men and women? You know, sometimes we think that we are so busy, we don't have time to work. Sorry, we don't have time to go to church. We don't have time to serve God. But you know what? The angel of God appeared to whom? Appeared to the shepherds. They were all working. They were in their night shift on that day. They were working. You know, God is needed, Jesus is needed to every member of the family, working and non-working. What about the wise men? The highly educated. They came to Jesus to see Jesus. Are you with me this morning? Every one of the family member is in need of Jesus. You know, as I preach, I want you to believe. I want you to believe some of our family members are not Christians yet, not saved yet. You know, they appear to be Christian, but they don't believe in God. They don't have a right relationship with the Lord God. As I preach, I want you to believe in God this morning because God is telling us everyone is in need of the Savior. Everyone must come to see the Lord God. You know, as you listen to me, I want you again repeat these things. I want you to know two things. One, the privilege of coming in faith with Jesus. We are all privileged to come in faith with Jesus. You know, sometimes those who are born in as a Christian family, you don't feel it because you are born in a Christian family. But when you come from a non-Christian background, you know, you know the impact that makes in your life. You know the benefit, the joy that you experience in your life. Like for example, me and Akshi and Faith, I don't know who else. You know, they all come from a non-Christian family background. And you know how much you enjoy you know, having a right relationship with God. And how much you enjoy the fellowship that you have with believers. We are privileged to have faith in Lord Jesus. Number two. The truth that everyone must come in faith with the Lord Jesus. Everyone in your family must come in faith. Everyone in your workplace, you know, that is the will of God because the Bible says everyone must be saved. That is the will of God. Everyone must. God doesn't want anyone to perish. The reason why God is delaying is that God believes, God wants that not, no one should perish. Everyone should come in faith. Your family members, people in your workplace, people in your apartment, in your community. Everyone must come in faith with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, that is the desire of God. That is the will of God. So two things to remember. One is the privilege of coming in faith with the Lord Jesus. And the second one is the truth that everyone must be saved. You know, I'm looking at this instruction that is given by the angels. Shall we read that again? And this will be the sign to you. Read it together. You will find it. Read it together. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. The angel of God, when we come in faith, 
to Lord Jesus, this is what we see. When the shepherds came there, they, they were so you know, eager to see where the baby Jesus is. And then when they came to the cattle shed, and when they looked at the baby, and the angel of God has already given instruction, this, what, this is what you will see there. Angel of God did not want the shepherds to be you know, struck with the awe and wonder, what is this? An angel of God gave an instruction already. When you go there, that's what you will see. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloth, lying in a manger. You know, that's what Jesus is telling us this morning. When you come in faith with the Lord God, this is what you will see. This is what you will see in your life. Number one, you will find a baby. When you come to faith in Lord Jesus, you will find a baby that tells me of his humanity. Can you say humanity? You will find a baby that tells me that when we come in Christ, we will see God coming in humanity. You know, Son of God took on true humanity when he was conceived in the womb of Mary. And he was born in Bethlehem, as we know. He was not of God and of men, no. He was fully God and fully man. And you know, he did not cease to be God when he was born in this world. He was still God. Now I want you to think about this amazing fact. All that the shepherd could see, a baby, God in humanity, God in humanity. And since he was born as a baby, that did not stop him being God. He was still God. He was fully God and he was fully human when God took the place of man as he was born. You know, the Jews, they have problem believing in this. They don't believe, even though they may, they, you know, they, they, they may hold on, what, hold on to Jesus and esteem him, they give you reverence to him, but they do not believe the humanity of Lord God. And for a Muslim, they don't believe this. They say that he is a great prophet sent by Allah. Right? And, but they very vigorously they deny that he is the son of God. Even to say that he is the son of God, it's a blasphemy for them. For Muslims. For Hindus, they don't believe in this either. In their religion, Jesus might be a God, but one among the millions of gods. Jesus might be a God, but he may be a one among the millions of God. They don't believe that Jesus is the only son of God. That God came in flesh. They don't believe that. We are talking about finding a baby. When you come to Jesus, you will find God in humanity. You will wonder, I thought I come to God, but my God is like me. My God has gone through what I have gone through. My God knows what I'm talking about. My God knows all my pain. I can go and share my pain and my struggle, my agony and everything openly to him because he's just in humanity. He's God in human. But we believe. God wants everyone must believe in the humanity of God. The message here is when you come to Christ, you will see a babe. You will see the humanity of God. You know, today that attracts many, many non-Christians into Christianity. Because the fact that, you know, God being a celestial object, you know, that's how they look at God. And they have all the trouble to understand whoever God is. But they take the gospel of John, they take the gospel of Luke and start reading. They will find God coming down in the form of a baby and living and walking like us. He was just among us. He was working with us. You know, John says, I could touch him. I could feel him. I know how God looks and tastes and sees. I know all about my God. God coming in humanity is the very fact that people are drawn to the cross today. Number two, the angel is telling, when you go there, you'll see a baby wrapped in swaddling cloth. In those days, when baby is born, and even today, when baby is born, they are wrapped. I don't know why they do it. The nurses may know about it. They wrap the baby. 
You know, some of the customs, they wrap the head separate, the hand separate, and the foot separate, and again wrap the baby in one bundle. All that we see, just a bundle there, right? The baby is wrapped. They won't allow the baby to just move freely. It was a custom to wrap the baby, even in those days. It's one thing, and it is good that you know, the baby is not touched and affected by the external climatic conditions, because just fresh out of the womb of the mother, but now the baby has to be taken care of. There may be many other reasons why they do it. But now this baby, Jesus, he was wrapped in a strip of cloth, probably to be, to be protected from that you know, weather condition in Bethlehem at that time. And if you look at the baby, the shepherds came running and to see the baby, they see the baby, God in humanity. Are you with me? And they see the baby wrapped in swaddling cloths. The baby is bound, the baby is helpless, baby is wrapped totally, and baby cannot move here and there, that's what they could see. The baby is in trouble now because the baby has not no freedom, the baby cannot just move around. And when I look at the baby who is wrapped in a swaddling cloth, that tells me about his helplessness. The baby is totally dependent, totally helpless, totally helpless. I looked at the same baby, follow with me, standing before the Jewish authorities, bound and guarded, as if they were treating a, you know, a criminal, a common criminal, that's how they were treating this baby in the later days. He was totally bound and he was totally helpless. He was falsely accused, but he did not reply. And when they reviled, he refused to answer. He was helpless, bound between the soldiers, Roman soldiers. And even he was standing before his accusers with his hands tied, waiting for a verdict, waiting for a judgment from the authorities. I was just looking at the baby who was bound, who was you know, wrapped up in the swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And I was also looking at the baby in the later days, standing before the Roman authorities, totally bound, totally no help, no help, helpless. The angel is asking us to go and see the helpless condition of the baby, to come in faith with Jesus, to come in faith with Jesus, the helplessness. That teaches me something. When we come in faith with the Lord Jesus, we find that helplessness within us because God wants us to depend on him. The first thing we learn when we come to Jesus, it is no more I, it is Christ who lives in me. We pray to him, Lord, you become my Lord and Savior. You take complete control over my life. You know, when we come in faith with the Lord Jesus, this is what we see. We see our baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. Total helplessness, total dependency on God. When we are born into Christ, in Christ, when we come in faith, God expects us to depend on him totally for everything. There is no more I. The I is gone. It's God. It's all about God. We see a baby taking a form of a human, humanity, and when it was born, it is wrapped up in a swaddling cloth. No help at all. God expects us to be totally depending on him. The third one, the finally, the baby is lying in a manger. It talks about his humility. We talked about his humanity. We talked about his helplessness. Now we talk about his Humility, humbleness. If you visit the baby, we really feel pity over the baby. Can you imagine a baby? Now we will go to the hospitals. You know, when the baby is delivered, they just, they just wrap the baby in a very, you know, very softy cushion and then give the baby in our hands. And the, you know, the crib bar, you know, wherever we lay the baby, it's just ready with the memory form, with the soft form, and that's where we very carefully go and lay our babies. But when we go there to see the scene in Bethlehem, we will really feel pity over the condition of the newborn baby. 
Instead of lying in the crib and instead of lying in the comfort of the crib bedding set, the baby is lying in a manger. Can you imagine? This shows the humility and humbleness of God when he came to lead us into this faith. You know, are you with me? You know, when we come to faith, Christ in faith, this is what we see in him. This is what we see. In order to get you into this faith, he took the extreme condition of poverty. I don't think even, a, you know, even the you know, true most poor man in this city, poor woman in this city would deliver in such a condition. But Jesus was delivered in that condition, the extreme poverty. He was born as a stranger in that open stable. You know, even throughout his life, if you take his life, he lived a life he did not have a place to own. He looked at the disciples, I don't have a place to even to lay my head. Do you still want to follow me? You know, this is the Jesus we see when we come in faith with the Lord God. And when he died, he died naked at the cross. We are talking about such a Jesus. We see such a Jesus as he was born. He is going back away from this world in the same condition, the way he was born, the way he was living. Philippians 2.7 says, but he made himself of no reputation. Philippians 2.7, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. That's where we see Jesus coming in the likeness of men to this world. Now, when you go and see, nothing about the baby appeared supernatural there, no? When the shepherds went there to visit the baby, I don't think they saw a halo around, you know, over his head, or they see, saw an angel standing there next to the baby. No. There is nothing supernatural about the baby. But we see the humility of God. We see the humbleness of God. You know, this is the simplicity of the gospel. Gospel is this simple. This is the simplicity of gospel because God is making it so simple by just coming down to this earth, just one among us, just becoming one among us. He wants us to come in faith with such a God. Listen to me. It's very important now that I'm going to conclude now. He is willing us, willing, willing all of us will come in contact or in faith with such a God. We are not talking about a God who is supernatural, super powerful. We are talking about a God who came in the form of a man, who was helpless and who was, you know, who was, who was born in humility. When Jesus was born, you know, this is what the world saw in Jesus. Just be with me carefully. When Jesus was born, this is the Jesus they saw in this world. But today in this world, so this is what the world is looking for, are looking from the Christians and believers of Jesus Christ. Are you with me? This is what the world is looking for. The world is looking for a Jesus, the world, the same Jesus who was seen by the world 2,000 years ago. That's the kind of Jesus the world is looking for among Christians and among believers. If we want everyone to come in faith, we need to reflect this baby who was born in Bethlehem. If you want your family members to come in faith, you need to reflect this baby, this Jesus to your family members. Because the shepherds came running in faith. And when they came in contact with the baby, they came into faith, believing that he, Jesus, is the Son of God. And if you expect your family members to come in faith, you need to represent this Jesus to them. This is a Jesus we serve. That simply means because we are born again, because we have come in faith, we can't behave different. We want to be just like Jesus. We are not supernatural. We are natural. We are just living in just this flesh. Because you have faith in God, we can't become prideful. Pride comes in my life, in all of our lives, easily. We are talking about this morning about pride, we both. Because things have happened well yesterday, pride should not come into our life. We cannot say that it's all because of me, it's all because of us. No. It's God's grace. 
So because, you know, you know, I'm talking about the reality, that's what comes in Christians. The moment they accept Jesus Christ, they start behaving different. Why? What's wrong with you? Because God is using you. We cannot lift ourselves above the one who is lying in the manger. Today we come across ministers of God. God is using them effectively. They think that there's something better than the one who is lying in the manger. No, no, no. Not at all. We are just ordinary human being. We are just ordinary human being. He is God. We are talking about God there. And I believe we don't have right to show ourselves any greater than the way God expressed himself as he was born. We don't have any right to show ourselves better than the one who was born. Because we are talking about God in humanity. If God could take such a fashion of birth on this earth, who am I? Who am I? I mean, that's what I find there. world has seen a simple, a humble God. But they are seeing, unfortunately, a prideful, a self-centered Christians who call themselves believers of Jesus and followers of Christ. The world is looking for somebody exactly the same as the way he was born into this world. That is the expectation. There is something terribly wrong in Christianity. God wants us to know the simple form that God took and the way he came into this world. And we make the message of the gospel so complicated. And we make it as if it's something bigger that nobody can understand, but that's not the idea. God is telling us, I want you to be simple. I want you to be just humble. And the way I came into this world, supernatural, but he looked simple. You know, a true child of God is inside supernatural. Inside powerful, but outside normal. A sign of a true child of God, just take it from me, listen to me. The sign, how do you identify whether somebody is from God or not? This is a litmus test. They are supernatural inside, not outside. The moment we try to show, show that we are supernatural outside, we are already fell. We are gone already. Inside we are supernatural. Inside we are holy. But try, don't try to be holy outside. Just, just, just be like others. Just be like people. Just don't try to be like angels. We have an angel, thank God. But outside, just try to be humble. God of the universe, but he appeared in humility. The God who is in control of everything, but he is helpless here. That shows the dependency on God. How much you and I need to depend on God. You know, many times we try to stand on our own strength. But God is telling us, teaching us this morning, you need to depend on me. We can have all the comfort, but chill, still, we need to choose to be humble. We can never demand that I will live in such a situation only. I will stay in such a hotel only. I will come only if you have that many people. Then we don't want you. We don't want to call you. We don't want to invite you. You know, these are the signs, you know, a child of God, a true child. I mean, that's applicable to all of us. That's what we need to bring to this world because the world is looking for the same Jesus who walked on the face of this earth. They don't want another Jesus because Paul says very clearly, there is no other Jesus. There may be many Jesuses today, but then, you know, only one Jesus. And that's the Jesus we want to represent as Christians. And I want to thank God because we have come in faith with the Lord God. We are come in faith with that baby already. I want to thank God, but we must lead others into the faith. The world around us is looking for Jesus in us. They know about us. When you invite people for this presentation, they know about you. They know about you. They know about you, but they don't know about Jesus. When you say Jesus, when you say the birth of Jesus, we are celebrating the birth of Jesus. You know, someone I remember, we were, uh, Joy was, you know, doing the daycare for them. And Joy says, I pray for your, their Hindu family. Joy says, and I, I pray for your child. Your child will be okay. He will behave normal. He will be okay. And she says, Joy, I don't believe. I don't believe in your, I don't, I, I don't believe in your God. 
But I, don't, I, I believe in your prayer. I believe you because you are in front of me. I don't see your God. You know, that's the same thing to all of us. They believe in us. They don't believe in our Jesus, but they believe in us. And now we are in trouble. We have a great responsibility to reflect that Jesus correctly, appropriately to those who are in need of Jesus. The moment we misguide them, they cannot come and see the baby. We need to be appearing the same way how Jesus was appearing in the manger, taking a form of humanity. Still we are human and we, you know, wrapped up in the swaddling cloth. Still we are depending on God. We cannot do anything by ourselves. And thirdly, as we saw, lying in a manger, still we need to show our humility and humbleness. People will follow Jesus. It's up to us. What Jesus we represent to this generation. Shall we pray? Shall we all stand for a time of prayer before we close?